First, Gene starts with The Bell Jar. Roger, The Bell Jar is a novel written by poet Sylvia Plath, who committed suicide at age 31 back in 1963. The novel is a semi-autobiographical book about two years of psychic pain experienced by the writer's alter ego, Esther Greenwood, a college student in the 50s. Marilyn Hassett, who starred on the other side of the mountain, plays Esther Greenwood. She's a very confused college student, as she tells her boyfriend one night. Remember the night we drove back from the Harvard game? And you asked me if I wanted to live in the city or in the country? And I said both. But I wanted to live in both places at once. And you laughed. And you said that anybody that felt like that had to be a true neurotic. Well, you're right. And then I'll always be torn between two things, like living in the country or the city. Being a poet or a housewife. I know that. I'm neurotic as hell. And it fragments me. It scatters me all over the place. And I'll probably end up spending the rest of my life flying back and forth between one mutually exclusive thing and another. Let me fly with you then. You can't. I don't know why you can't fly with her. It's a sad scene, maybe, but it doesn't make much sense at all. She's just mouthing words there when she tells her boyfriend about wanting to be both a poet and a housewife. We don't buy it. Up until this point in the movie, all she's ever talked about is wanting to be a poet. In fact, to help her writing career, after graduation, she wins a chance to work as an editorial assistant on a New York women's magazine. Now the movie gets really loony as Esther talks with one of her Southern Belle girlfriends, who also works at the magazine, about their writing careers. Do you really want to be in fashion? Oh, Lordy, no. I want to write novels of unending passion and unrequited love, like Philomena Guinea writes. Philomena Guinea? Yeah. She's my sponsor at school. You know her? You mean you really know her? Tell me what she's like. Well, she's very tall and uh -huh. very austere, and she talks very English, although she was born in Ohio. <laughs> but she writes pop boilers, Zoeing. So what? She makes loads of money. You know, they make movies out of her books. She travels all over the world. But that's just a dream. I mean, I'm going to wind up married with a bunch of kids, and that's as far as my old pop dream's going to go anyway. It's not a pipe dream. You could do anything you want to. Oh. You really could. You could be a scientist, a doctor. You could be a lady of the pro champions, or a Boston Symphony trumpet player, or a deep sea diver. Or you could be a pot boiler writer, or a pot writer boiler, or a writer boiler pot. You are, you are behind the barn. Unbelievable. A classic <laughs> dumb moment in the movies. That scene's a cross between All My Children and Hee Haw. <laughs> Seen as a look of a low-grade soap opera, as does the entire second half of the film, as Esther encounters an assortment of slobbering men who want to rape her. The film, The Bell Jar, really trashes the novel, and that's a particular shame. Sylvia Plath, the author, has a wide following among young women in college. They read her poetry, and they don't regard her novel or her poetry as soap opera. They identify with its revelations and relate to its psychic pain. I think those readers will be insulted and angered by what's happened to the bell jar. As for those who haven't read the book, they'll just find the movie boring and I think sometimes laughable. I agree. You know, one of the problems that the movie faces and never solves is the problem of making a writer interesting in the first place in a movie. Writing is not a cinematic act. I mean, ordinarily you see the guy, it's the middle of the night, he's tearing paper out of the typewriter, throwing it across the room drinking scotch. She doesn't even go that far. She writes a couple of notes in a loose-leaf binder, and that's it. Yeah, it doesn't show the madness either very creatively. All that she does throughout the film, pretty much, is scream at the top of her lungs. And when you start at an emotional pitch that high fairly early in the movie, the actress has no place to go. That's unrelenting. And there's another problem, too. She's always going on and on about how this woman's magazine in New York is beneath her. Mm -hmm. And yet the entire movie is on the level of true romances or true confessions. This mm -hmm. is one of the few movies about suicide 
in which the audience is shouting, jump, jump, you know, <laughs> get it over with. You're right. Put us out of our misery. You're right. Jar, rated, ra rated R, starred Marilyn Hassett as a suicidal young poet in a story that made soap operas look good. Neither Gene nor I can even remotely recommend you see it, so two no's for that one.